What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, thanks for joining me today. This project right here, it's this drill press stand. Finally, been a long time in the making, been wanting to do one of these. I'm gonna show you my first one here. This, well, this was an older drill press I got about 10 years ago, and I threw this little A-frame stand together, and it served its purpose. It wasn't mobile, it didn't have much storage, and it's really just an eyesore here. So that was my motivating factor to finally get this done. And I really, well, I really like how this one turned out. So if you wanna see how I did it, join me along for the ride, and let's get to it. Thanks for joining me, let's go. So I decided to do a little bit of an upgrade. We are upgrading to the current model of the Jet 12 inch drill press. And uh, when you're unboxing this thing, yeah, don't do that. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce you to the best $100 I've spent in a while. This is a DeWalt like portable table that extends itself and is ready to hold, I, I believe a thousand pounds, maybe less, maybe more, I don't know. Uh, but it's pretty strong in like two seconds, watch. See that button? I don't know if you can see it. See, push. So watch this. You push, and you're good. This is gonna be where I'm gonna put the drill press while I build the new cart. So a lot of times when you upgrade to a new tool, it really gives you the motivating factor to make yourself something new for it. As you can see here, this stand I'm making was essentially birthed out of getting the new tool itself. So sometimes that's all it takes, is just to get yourself a little something new, and then you can make something so much better than you would have had you just kept the old one. Now the old one works okay. Uh, a few things had come off, some of the handles and various things like that. But as you see me putting this together now, I have listed the old drill press on Facebook Marketplace here in the Jacksonville 904 area code. So if you're around here, check it out. After this video is aired, check out Marketplace and uh, the drill press will be up there for sale. Um, for a pretty good price too. Um, you just have to go check it out. But as you see, looks good. And I couldn't resist turning it on and seeing just how many RPM it can get up to and my goodness, that's fast. Okay, on to the cabinet build. I've got these sheets of four by eight double-sided laminate, black laminate plywood from my local hardwood dealer here in Jacksonville called Florida Southern Plywood. I'm gonna link them down below. A lot of people ask me where I get all my sheet goods. This is the place, if you're in this 904 area code in Duval County or in the surrounding area of Northeast Florida, go check them out for sure. Now the fact that these are four by eight, I need to cut them down to a more manageable size with a straight edge and a circular saw. It makes quick work. And then of course, you know, use your dust collector to clean it up a little bit because this stuff can be pretty nasty. With the pieces in more manageable sizes, I'm going to rip everything to length and width and assemble a simple cabinet carcass. I'm using tight bonds quick and thick here because this is laminate. Wood glue is not gonna really do anything to this, but this multi-purpose fast drying glue dries clear and quite frankly, it does bond materials like this pretty well. But needless to say, I'm still gonna come back in with some screws and countersink those for added strength. I wouldn't just rely on this with laminate for sure. So. That being said, I'm gonna put some 90 degree clamps in here, making sure everything's nice and square before I go ahead and start drilling these screws out. And again, I wanna thank Rockler for helping me with this build. Those 90 degree clamps along with these countersink bits, everything that I'm gonna use in this video from Rockler is gonna be linked down below. As I've always said, go support them. They support this community really well and they have awesome products. So check them out, link is down below. Okay, with everything assembled, I'm gonna show you exactly how these countersink bits work. They have a collar that doesn't allow you to go further than you need to, giving you the depth you want. You can set everything, everything is adjustable. I'm using four screws per side, and it goes together pretty simply. I then cut a piece of half inch Baltic birch and then tacked it in place for some stability as the back of the piece. Now on to making some drawers. Now this is honestly the simplest way to make drawers in my opinion. You basically cut the bottoms out out of half inch Baltic birch and then you cut the sides out. Now for me, I've got six drawers and they're gonna take up a space of about 30 inches. So I'm cutting these drawer heights as about four and a half inches. I'm gonna take the bottom of the drawer and put it up against the blade and the stop block and start cutting these pieces so I have exact measurements. So with the fronts and the backs of the drawers cut, it's now time to cut the left and right sides. I simply put a stop block along my fence and repeat the same process as you see before, but there's a mistake here and I'm gonna explain what I did. Check this out. 
holy mackerel, this is why you go and you test the one cut that you made to see if it works before you start thinking you got all the right measurements and making a bunch of cuts. Here's why. Okay. Those of you that have already noticed, congrats. You're definitely sharper than I am. So this is the front and back of the drawer, right? And it rests on the top. Okay. I forgot to subtract the thickness of two of these pieces on these. As you can see, it's exactly dead even. That was a mistake. It's an easy mistake to fix, but it would have been a pain because I would have cut a whole bunch and had to do a whole bunch of extra work. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Measure twice, cut once. Actually, cut once, go check again, see what's going on, and then make, a, <laughs> make adjustments if you need to. All right, let's try it again. Okay, off camera, and I know you can appreciate me sanding off camera, because who, who wants to see that? Um, I sanded the inside faces of the bottom and the left and right and the front and back of the drawers. Then, now it's time to put this all together, and then I can sand the outside. But I promise you I won't film that, so. But I will film putting these things together and show you just how easy it is to make a drawer. Check this out. Ginger ale with a spoon. Oh yeah. Okay, back to this. I promise you, you only see about maybe a tenth of the shenanigans this little girl does in the shop. Either way, I'm happy to share it and I appreciate all the comments about how you guys really appreciate the, the family aspect of this channel. That really does mean a lot. But onto this drawer. Essentially, I'm using glue and CA glue to hold everything in place and then I tack it in place with brad nails and then there you go. It's pretty simple. Just make sure your pieces are cut exactly right and you should have no problem with this and there's a drawer. I repeated that six times. I'm not gonna show you all six, but just know it was the same process. At this point, it was time to install some drawer slides. Now, these are some really cool drawer slides. They're nothing fancy. They're full extension drawer slides by a company called AccuRide, but you get them from Rockler as well. Again, those are linked down below. And they have a really cool feature about them that I'm gonna show you here in just a moment. But here's how I install them. I essentially put two drawer slides on either side, raised up with these spacer blocks, and then, Every once in a while, you'll find these little holes along the side. And you just kind of attach the screws into the holes there, there, there. It's pretty simple. Then once you get one drawer installed, I put in two pieces of Baltic birch that are half inch in thickness. So raising it one inch up, and then I install two more drawer slides. I then remove one piece of half inch material, and then I put the drawer on top of that and install the drawer slide as you see here as well. Pretty ingenious process, goes pretty quickly. And now I'm about halfway there. At this point, I'm gonna show you this really interesting feature of these drawer slides. And it's gonna come in the form of this little apparatus right here. This screw is gonna screw into, well, that hole. And you see to the left, there is another Phillips head little adapter right there. And so this really, this feature comes in handy a lot when the drawers already have their faces on them. So what you do is you install one screw at the front and one screw at the back. And that's gonna be plenty strong to give you stability for what you need. But that little Phillips head that I showed you earlier is kind of like a micro adjusting feature. Let me show you how this works. So essentially, if you have a drawer that is out of alignment just a little bit, you can move the drawer up and down by almost a quarter of an inch. Check that out, let's see this again. Look at the difference of the height of the drawer within the drawer slide. So if you have a drawer facing, or face that's already on there, and it looks a little bit out of whack for some reason, you can come back and make these micro adjustments with these drawer slides. Really cool feature. Not a lot of people know about it, and nor have I seen a lot of people talk about it. I figured I would share it with you. So check out the link down below and get yourself some of these drawer slides. Well, I guess you could say at this point, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. And, um, now it's time to make the faces. And I think I'm gonna make those out of the same stuff here. So. Pretty cool. Oh, by the way, I don't know if y'all know, but I collect old levels. I have about, how many do I have? There's nobody over there. I don't know why I looked. <laughs> but I think I've got probably about maybe 30 so far. Uh, my wife and I really go, uh, really go. We really enjoy going to estate sales around here. 
And um, I try to find things like things like this uh, quite often. And a lot of times you won't believe you won't believe how many old men have shed after shed in their garage, and there's always one of these lying around. So um, yeah, I may do a display of these in this shop. Sorry to ramble. That's just a little a little tidbit about something I collect. Okay, so to install the wheels, I'm gonna tip this thing upside down, but before I do that, I'm gonna get my hand stuck, no problem. And then I'm gonna go ahead and break all the edges as well. This laminate stuff can be very sharp. You might see a bandage on one of my fingers later on, and that's kind of what happens. So be careful when you're working with this stuff. So I use that moving blanket to tip it to its side, but not to its front, and yeah. You know what I just realized? I probably scratched up the top <laughs> by spinning it around like that. But you know what? It's okay. It's shop furniture. Right? Right? Hey, that's okay. Oh, she's a fuss. Sometimes kids get fussy and that's okay. Now to install the wheels, I'm using these heavy duty three inch casters. Two of the wheels do not rotate at all. They don't swivel, they're fixed. And the other two in the front, which I'm putting them in the front, have locking mechanisms and those swivel as well. These wheels were used on my lumber cart that holds I don't know, 12 sheets of plywood, and they're working great for that, so they should be just fine for this drill press stand as well. Cutting some of this black laminate down to be the drawer faces, you can see there, I don't show you the injury, but yeah, I cut my finger pretty good on this stuff, so be careful if you're ever working with this. The edges can be quite sharp. Now, with the drawer faces cut, I need to find the dead center of them, and I'm gonna take the angle from corner to corner and make a little X. And this is gonna help me find the center because I'm gonna use a single drawer pull. And the sibling rivalry starts pretty early. Oh no. I try to get in there and console this little guy. I'm like, it's okay, buddy. <laughs> sometimes she loves him to death, but sometimes she wants nothing to do with him. Okay, okay, back to the build. Now I'm using a drywall square to put a mark on the middle of all these drawer fronts. This is gonna give me just that much more accuracy when I install these drawer pulls. And like I said earlier, this stuff can be sharp and to break all the edges, I'm using a chamfer bit on my hand router here, just making sure all the edges are broken, giving it a nice tactile feel. To install these, pretty simple. You just clamp them in place, making sure they're level. I use a mallet, take my time once I like where they're at, because this is gonna be your building block for all the way up. I'm gonna use one of these little brad point bits here. Again, got these from Rockwood 2, they're linked down below. And I'm gonna simply drill this hole right through the middle of the drawer face and into the drawer itself. Once that hole is drilled, I'm gonna take a screw and attach the drawer face to the drawer itself. Once that's done, I pull it out. I take a couple clamps here just for preventative measurements to keep everything nice and tight while I'm installing these drawer faces to the drawers. I'm using one inch screws and I'm gonna use them at the four corners. No real reason to measure where you're gonna put these, just put them in the four corners just as best you can. And that is a real simple way to attach a face to a drawer. I'm using popsicle sticks here to give me a little bit of a spacer for the next one to repeat the same process, drill the hole, put the screw in, I'm gonna pull the other drawer out underneath it to keep those popsicle stick spacers there, clamp it in place, and then screw it in again. Pretty simple process. Oh, and the hole in the middle that I'm drilling, I'm gonna use that reference hole for the drawer pull, so there's no need to worry about drilling a hole in it at this point to help you install. Well, this doesn't happen very often, but I built something that is too heavy for me to take down by itself. So I think removing the drawers is something I have to do to get it onto the floor because I can't use this as a drill press stand up there. <laughs> All right, so luckily these drawer slides are easy to take out. Two little levers on either side that come right out and yeah, I can probably lift it with the last drawer. Yeah. I hope. Listen for a noise in three, two, Not sure if you caught that, but there was a pack of screws up here. <laughs> so after cleaning up those screws, I got a little help from this uh, Triceratops here. We're gonna install these single drawer pulls. I just picked these up from Home Depot. I like the aesthetic of them and they work. And yeah, look at this. 
I'm telling you guys, it is priceless time in here with her. So much fun. Who's this? Crocodile. Crocodile, what's next? Snake. Snake, okay, what's next? Tiger. Tiger, and then what? Who? Uh, Sarah. Sarah, but what kind of animal is she? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Uh, maybe that's a saber tooth tiger then, right? <laughs> they grow up so fast. I get a lot of comments about how just enjoy this time, and I sure do. But moving on, we're gonna take the angle of the drill press's base, and we're gonna transfer that to our table saw blade. I'm gonna take a few strips of this same material, and I'm gonna cut that angle down. I'm gonna do that also to some perpendicular as well. As you see, I'm making little blocks with the same angles. I'm rotating them back and forth, and the idea here is to make a bracket that's gonna to attach to the top that's gonna to hold this in place without having to put really big bolts through those two holes in the actual cast iron. So I'm using some Starbond CA glue and activator to make these brackets, little green tape to kind of hold it all together. I'm gonna to trim it here on the crosscut sled, and of course I did make two, one for the front, and one for the back. Of course, breaking all the edges for aesthetics and safety as well. And these brackets look like actual brackets, but they have that compound joint in them. So this should work pretty well. Now I've moved the drill press onto the stand and here's the table again, folds away in a couple seconds. The links are below and check this out. Here we go. We're gonna move this thing over. We're gonna center it exactly where we need it. I'm gonna put it a little bit further back than forward and we're gonna attach these just like this. Countersinking some screws. Moving on, let me give you a better look at how this is all installed. I think this works pretty well and I like it. Of course, she's at her shenanigans one more time playing karate, which she calls this. She inflates the bag and then turns the machine off and she is happier than a seagull with a french fry. Look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. And she has been practicing. Her technique's getting a little bit better since the install. Proud of her, for sure. Okay, at this point in the video, I'm gonna show you how to build this really small shelf. It's really handy and I wanna show you exactly why we're making the shelf, okay? Really simply gonna join two pieces of Baltic at 90 degrees with some star bond and then screw it in place. This little shelf is gonna come in so handy. I can't wait for you guys to see what we're gonna put on it. But first I'm gonna use some green tape to kinda, of, well, yeah, it's not really a shelf. It's a bracket, of course. This is gonna be installed right where I'm gonna keep this drill press. When the wheels are locked, there is no chance of this thing tipping forward just in case. I'll explain more exactly here in a second, but I like it. Okay, so not only does it, not only does this shelf, uh, it's not a shelf, it's a support, it's for safety, you know? Just in case the thing were to tip over, say, I don't know, maybe a kid comes in, hey, excuse me, like now. Like maybe a kid comes in here and starts opening up all these drawers and they'll be front heavy. You don't want this thing flipping over. Even though the back weight of this drill press is actually in the, you know, this, oh, do I need to pick you up for this seat? Come here. You're such a ham, you know that? Okay, so, so like I'm saying, the back edge of this drill press is weighted in the back. Of course it's weighted in the back, but that is gonna help prevent from falling over. But this shelf is really that preventative maintenance. But even when things are on wheels, sometimes they move just a little bit, okay? So I've got these two little pieces of wood here and I'm gonna show you how these are gonna prevent this thing from moving at all and making this a rock solid foundation. All right, you wanna show? You wanna do it? Okay, let's do it. There you go, put it right here. You do it, come on. Right, lay it down. Uh-oh, we got another one, here. You can use this, here, use that one. All right, and you push it like that, push it. Right. Yay! <laughs> Oh, she is such a good helper, and this makes this thing rock solid. Okay, I know it looks a little funny, but this system, I mean, this thing, this thing is rock solid now, and I'm happy with it. So I'll give you the final touches and show you what I'm gonna store in this thing. 
So I got a little overzealous and filmed this kind of tour of it without cleaning it up. I know there's some fingerprints on it right now, but either way, what do you guys think? Came out pretty well, I think, or came out good. People do well, right? Inanimate objects are good, animate objects are well. Is that right? Sorry to be the grammar police. Either way, look at this thing. It looks great. I think this technique of making these brackets to hold it in place and all that good stuff, I got the storage I need and yeah. And even though this is a drill press stand, I'm gonna use it to hold some sandpaper storage. I cut down these boxes of sandpaper and then I put a little corner tab of blue tape and then I go ahead and mark exactly what grit is what. And as you see, pretty easy. After you install these, you can tell exactly what you got. So the front drawer or the top drawer, we're gonna keep all of our bits, our Forster bits, countersink, standard bits, all that's right there. Next drawer down, there's the sanding pads and also the remote for the dust collector. And then in the sequential drawers underneath, well, there's nothing there yet. It's just ready to be filled. And yeah, love it. Well, there you have it. This project right here, I'm gonna tell you, I've been meaning to do something like this for about 10 years. Ever since I bought that first drill press 10 years ago, I have been chomping at the bit to make something like this and I just never have. I don't know why, I just never have. So, with that being said, upgrading to a new drill press, sometimes when you upgrade to a new tool, it gives you that motivating factor to make a new home for it. And this is a pretty prime example of that right here. So, I really do appreciate you guys joining me for this. I always learn something along the way during these projects. You know, that laminate is sharp. <laughs> and uh, also, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate all the support and all the comments we've been getting really since the beginning of this journey. And it just keeps coming and I'm humbled by it and I thank you so much. So that's it, this project. I hope you got something out of it and I will see you guys on that next one. Until then, my name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside and we'll see you on that next project. Take care.